Hi friends, Shannon here. Welcome to the first episode of my Art Adventure series. While my video is chock full of art tips, my real purpose is to motivate you to get out there, anywhere, and just paint without worrying about the outcome. Give me a shout if you like what you see. We are down in the lower Florida Keys. We scoped out this place last week, although we got caught in the storm and we had a little setback, which I'll include in the video later. Brock helped me set up a shade tent, and I'm using an old, well-loved, and much-used wooden French easel. You'll see me here knee-deep in the water, and I'm hoping this will inspire you to get out of the studio and just go just about anywhere and paint, or write, or sing, or crochet, or otherwise create. Let your creativity take its own course. Apparently, I started recording after I began painting, so let me catch you up. I toned the canvas deep gray on the bottom half, marking my horizon line on the bottom third line. Keeping that horizon line above or below the center line helps keep it dynamic Hi, Carissa. as opposed to a static centered horizon line. This aerial view will give you a taste of what we're feeling. Like we're the only people left of this beautiful paradise. It's just breathtaking. You can see why I want to paint here. I'm going to go ahead and give a few painting tips while I paint. You're more than welcome to paint along. Of course, you'll want to pause unless you can paint with supersonic speed. But painting along with artists is a really effective way to learn. But my main objective is just to encourage you to get out there and give it a try. I bet some of you have already painted in some pretty interesting spots. I would love it if you would share in the comments any places you've painted or sketched on site. That will give the rest of us even more incentive. My sky is a mixture of cerulean blue with white and a touch of dyke brown to desaturate it. This gives a beautiful blue without punching the viewer in the face. The sky gradually blends lighter toward the horizon lines. There are many ways to make clouds. I encourage you to experiment to find a style that works well for you. I'm dropping in the cloud shape and then adding medium to the paint for transparency in areas. Layering the white makes some areas more opaque and gives the clouds depth and three-dimensionality. Keep your edges soft and try to avoid making a precise pattern so your clouds remain organic. So I took a little break and went for a swim. There was an adorable tiny crab on one of the sandbag anchors from my shade tent. And then I was rewarded with a massive school of fish. I could not believe how fast they were traveling without once running into me. I stayed with school for quite a while because I was mesmerized. And I put a few clips into the video here for you to experience with me. There were so many fish, I couldn't believe it. This is what going on an art adventure is all about. I was smack dab in the middle of the school of fish on a mission traveling somewhere so fast. They would inevitably separate around me and then reconnect together as they passed by me. It was really awesome. At one point I stood up and you can see how shallow it is here. It is so unreal. The most important thing, especially if this is going to be your first time painting outdoors or drawing from life, focus on the pursuit of releasing your creativity and don't worry about whether or not you will show anyone the final product. Like anything else, allow yourself the learning curve and just enjoy the doing. Relish the making of art, appreciate putting strokes on a canvas, allow yourself this gift of loving the process and avoid being critical of the outcome. If you want to become better, putting your work down will not help. Rather, practice like anything else, like a sport or a musical instrument, gaming or cooking. My students ask me how to become better artists and I have a very easy answer, which they don't always like. Three things, practice, patience, and perseverance. Once you've made 100 outdoor paintings, you can start being judgy on yourself. Until then, make yourself a promise to enjoy the process. I would be remiss if I didn't share our minor catastrophe the weekend before. It looked fine when we headed out, but this storm blew in and surprised us. So while we waited for the rain to subside, we decided to see what we could find underwater. We were not surprised to find that the storm kicked up the silt and the visibility was not good. I always think it's kind of spooky when the viz is poor, because things kind of appear out of the murk and it's really unnerving. I was excited to see some shy goliath grouper, if only for a fleeting moment. These were little ones since they can grow as big as eight feet and upwards of 800 pounds. Schools of fish always astonish me. Just the sheer number of fish is a shocker. These are tiny iridescent, almost transparent bait fish, or you might say minnows. You'll see me pick up a beer can here. We always take the trash out of the ocean whenever we see it. I'll bring it home and discard properly. Brock and his friend Drew are trying to spearfish, but having little luck in the murky water. 
and then it really started to storm. And we had to get under the mangroves and out of the water as the lightning was too close for our safety. Well, here comes the embarrassing moment. So while we had waited out the storm, the tide went out, leaving us beached. When you're beached in the back country of the lower Florida Keys, you are stuck there until the tide comes back in. On this day, that would have been around 2 a.m. We haven't had that experience yet, but plenty of people we know have found themselves in that predicament. We were hoping to remain out of that category. If you've been beached and you want to share your story, you know we would love to read about it. Just so you know, we rocked the boat gently. My video is sped up, making it look a bit violent. I promise we were gentle with that baby. I slowed it down right here to regular speed, and you can see that we broke loose. Oh, lady gets stuck again. Like, I only put a little bit of the film in this video, but it was a long time. We were seriously thinking we were going to be along into the night. Finally, we were free for race of the Lord. Great old. And then we headed home, right back into the storm we had just escaped, hence the snorkel gear while we ride back. Hi, I'm in my studio today, finishing up the painting that I started yesterday. I didn't finish it at site because by the time I cleaned up the easel, there was about an inch of water in my easel, the tides rose. Uh, so let's see if I can't, can't finish that out today. I think the most important thing is that I need to remember to stay loose and keep with the integrity of the intentions. And I just want to make sure I don't get too tight now that I'm in my studio where I usually paint very precisely. I want to like, kind of keep it uh, lively. I'm adding some darks. You remember that dark acrylics dry lighter, so I'm making them darker. The contrast will help the painting pop. I'm using Persian blue, burnt sienna, and alizarin crimson with more crimson than the other colors. These are all warm colors. Give me a shout and let me know if you want more videos about the temperature of color, since many people were taught that blue is cool and I just told you I used a warm blue. I love color theory. Meanwhile, briefly I'm using cool lights and warm darks in this painting. As I add the darks, I need to make sure I don't fall into a predictable pattern as nature is not that static. I'm inserting some darks which will come across as a reflection of the mangroves. I just about always turn my canvas over to work out the bottom. Try it, it's a great little tip. Next, I'm gonna work out the lightest and darkest areas of the water. This helps it to look like the sun is reflecting off a side of a wave, leaving the other side void of light. It also gives movement to the whole piece. Remember to make your strokes larger and wider near the bottom and thinner and shorter as they go back into space to depict perspective. Here I'm creating atmospheric perspective by adding sky color to the further away mangrove, which will also help the tiny mangrove clump just left of the sun or to jump forward. I do want to mention that my horizon line is straight. It just appears bowed in the video because I'm using a generation one GoPro. Yes, I said gen one with a fisheye lens. <laughs> Once I get going on my channel and if you all are interested in these videos, I'll invest in a better recording device. This is still a little bit of learning by doing since I am new to video production. I'm using Premiere Pro to edit, which I love. It's not a super easy program, but I've used it before, so I'm comfortable with it. And if you're willing to work through the learning curve, it is the best. It's expensive, so if you're just beginning, I recommend using a cheaper program until you're sure you want to make the investment. You'll see me lay in some greens for a reflection of the mangroves. This is highly exaggerated from the reference, but I know that it will add some interest to the work of art. I'm adding in the last few details, a heron for a focal point and some sandpipers to balance it out. And then I'll finish it with a layer of gloss varnish. I hope this inspires you to go out and paint somewhere. A gentle but important reminder, if you venture out into nature to paint, please leave our beautiful planet as you found it. Take garbage and everything that you brought with you, including your dirty paint water. If you enjoyed this, please let me know. I am new to this whole channel thingy and I am interested to know what intrigues you. Thank you so much for watching.